The feast of the epiphany of the Lord always aroused in me a mixture of emotions. I used to feel happy as we used to place the statues of the three kings in our family crib on this day. And at the same time, I used to feel sad because I knew that very soon, my mom would ask us to dismantle the crib and remove all the decorations. This feast signaled that the Christmas season had come to an end. These days, however, the three kings appear on the crib as soon as Jesus is born, making me wonder if perhaps they have stopped traveling on camels now. Jokes apart, what is the feast of the epiphany of the Lord all about? Epiphany means manifestation. It is a celebration of God manifesting as the baby Jesus and revealing himself to the world. This narrative, which is based on the gospel according to Matthew, describes the Magi, men who were astrologers, looking for the star that would lead them to the promised Messiah. Interestingly, according to tradition, their names were Caspar, Melchior and Balthazar. They were also known as the three kings or the three wise men, though their number is never actually revealed in the Bible. They brought Jesus gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Gold was considered a symbol of kings, frankincense a perfume representing divinity which was often burned in the temple to worship God, and myrrh an anointing and embalming oil that symbolized death. By bringing it as a gift to Jesus, the wise men foretold his suffering and death. In the first reading, taken from the prophet Isaiah, we see him addressing the people who had suffered through the darkness of a long exile and were now returning to a Jerusalem that lay in ruins. The key theme of darkness is found not only in today's passage, which is chapter 60, but also in the previous chapter 59. Both these chapters are talking about moral and spiritual darkness caused by the sins of the people of Israel, which included turning away from following God, oppressing the workers, violence, injustice, and inequality among the citizens. Out of the darkness, two things emerge. First, the sons and daughters of Jerusalem will come back home. And second, Gentiles, because that's the second group that will come streaming to the light. There is hope for a dark world because the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon the world. He is the one who will bring the wandering captives home and the ignorant Gentiles to the true God. However, do we have any role to play in this or is it something that God will do by himself? Definitely, we have a very important role to play. No one will know about and believe in the light of the world unless we reflect that light into the world. Hence, the narrative begins with a clarion call to do two things, arise and shine. Arise from our life in the dust of sin and shine like a lamp on a lampstand. When we ourselves are an epiphany of God's coming into the darkness, people from all over the world will see today the epiphany that began with the three magis from the East. In the second reading taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, we witness Paul speak about the mystical body of Christ and highlight the aspect of the universality of Jesus Christ. Jews and believing Gentiles are joined together into one body of Christ, into one church and no longer separated before God. The reading focuses on Paul's role as a herald of God's revelation. God revealed a divine mystery to Paul and gave him a mission to share that mystery with others. The mystery was God's plan of salvation for the Gentiles. As a result, Gentiles shared in the promise made to the Jews by God as co-heirs. They sat as equals at the table of the Lord with their Jewish brethren. And they shared the same hope in the coming of the Messiah. 
as we reflect on the Feast of the Epiphany. Two symbols, namely the gifts of the Magi and the star, draw my attention. The Magi bought the gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh for the baby Jesus. What gifts are we bringing for Jesus? Generally, whenever we pray, we ask God for something or the other. We ask for good health, employment, peace, success and prosperity for ourselves and our loved ones, which is great and is an essential part of prayer. But can we look at prayer as something beyond merely asking for favors? Can we ask what God wants of us in our life? Is there something that He is asking us to do? What gift does He want to receive from us? The second symbol of the star is equally important as it reflects our mission as Christians. As the star led the Magi to the baby Jesus, we too are called to lead people to Jesus. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. These words of St. Francis of Assisi are excellent to help us understand how we are called to lead people to Jesus. I remember once having visited a cloistered Carmel convent in Mumbai some years ago. Our entire group of brothers had gone there to visit them and they graciously accepted to meet us. And I remember among all the sisters, there was one particular sister who had a sort of a supernatural glow on her face. And this wasn't the glow of fair and lovely or you know some beauty cream. It was something divine. And I remember saying to myself, there is something different about that sister. She is close to Jesus. She preached the gospel without using any words. Preaching the gospel is not restricted to only the church premises, but is an integral part of our daily life. We are called to preach the gospel at our home, in our office, and even when we are hanging out with our friends. Will someone look at us and feel that, yes, there is something different about him or her and I want to become or be like that person? How can you be the star that will lead others to Jesus? Our world today is not very different from that of the time of Isaiah. Darkness is all around us and we have the challenge as Christians to arise and shine to be that light that will give hope to people. Epiphany challenges us to reconsider all the people whom we see as outside the boundaries of God's love. It challenges us to abandon our narrow outlooks and welcome even those whom we would not prefer to love. This, my dear friends, is the Epiphany message. May God bless us all.